Hey y'all, welcome back or welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Alicia and we are deep in the trenches part four of my fertility fibers and IVF journey. And let's just get right into it because y'all, y'all was not playing with me about the last video. Y'all was like, girl, where's the next part? Cause you said you already had it. Here it is. I don't want to tell you, but if you are new here, you may want to check out parts one through three. So you kind of know what we talk about because huh, we into the thick of it. Let's go. So then we get into May 2020 and they start contacting people saying we're opening back up. So once my team got in contact with me, it was like, go, we ready to go. Green light. Let's hit it. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, oh, oh, all right, hang on. You know what I'm saying? I, okay. So um, at that time they were like okay this is the second half like for me i don't know if other people break it up like this but for me that's how it felt I, maybe it's because i had that big break in between but it felt like the second half now at this point nothing but my first hysteropathy the iui and the egg retrieval was my husband able to attend those are the only things he was able to attend from then on, even when it opened back up, he was not even able to come into the building, baby. I always talk about how alone you can feel in this process, even as a married woman with a spouse who is very supportive, you still feel alone because it's you and your body and your thoughts and all of that. And you got to go in that doctor and you got to get the medicine put into you. So no matter how much of a support system you have, you can tend to feel alone in it so that kind of made me feel even more alone because as you will hear a lot of things transpired after this may sent it to the races it was a lot <laughs> okay we are starting the process for the frozen embryo transfer aka a F E T, and they're like this is the medicine you need this is your protocol let's go like i said everything is based on your cycle so you know they wait for a period once you get the period get green light you know what i mean hormones and everything look normal your charts your numbers look normal it's go go time you start taking your meds so with the frozen embryo transfer you start on estrogen or estradiol depends on if you got the name brand you know what i'm saying i'll be getting the cheapest one uh -huh. give me the pay less one thank you because <laughs> it's expensive we ain't getting into that right now okay um but yeah get you know uh off market brand me it worked it got the same okay off market brand me um so you get on your estradiol your estrogen pills you're taking that how many many times a day they tell you to take it um for about two weeks that is thickening your lining of your uterus to make it ready to receive the embryo then after the two weeks, you, you know, in that time you go and get your blood work and get an ultrasound and they looking at the, the um, uterus and they look good. They give you the green light to start your progesterone. Now, as for me, my situation was different. Um, Everybody's medicine is different because everybody has different bodies, different situations. So you may have other health things or whatever. I don't know. So you start your progesterone, which is usually another injection, but these ones are going in the bootay. Now that is particularly complicated because if you have to give yourself an injection, um, do I look like a uh, stretch Armstrong? Okay. Like what in the aerobics, ballerina, yoga, am I going to be able to, they tell you to like stretch the skin. So you have to like stretch the skin with one hand and put the needle in at a 90 degree angle with the other one. All of that, all of that behind my back. Behind my back. What? So that already, it, 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 that, that did give me agita thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot. Oh, the progesterone and oil injections um, you get your vial of, you know, progesterone and oil. You have your syringes and your needles and all of that that you get. And you have to do it um, every day or every other day, depending on your protocols. Mine did, ended up being every day. At first, I was doing every other day. And then there was a different one, um, like a suppository that you enter um, vaginally. And, you know, so you alternate between those two. 
but it, when they see if your body is not responding to that when they you know test out and everything like that then they may switch your protocol so like after like a day or two of me being on it you know to have you come back in to see how it's going they're like oh no we want you to do all injections like switch whatever you was doing before switch this all so every day in the booty you gotta get an injection now these injections they hurt they hurt it might not hurt right when you're doing it. I, and I don't even like needles. We discussed this before. But it hurts because a day or two later, your booty starts to hurt to the point where it's like, I have to lay a certain way, sit a certain way. Also, you can't give yourself injections in the same spot. I don't got that much booty. I don't have that much booty. Like, what is the, what's the plan here? I don't have that much booty. Like, I'm running out of booty. I'm running out of cheeks. I'm running out of cheeks. <laughs> so um you're doing that i think for about five days because they say it takes about 120 hours for that to be ready for them to implant the embryo that's the average amount of time now with that they don't put you to sleep or anything for this they put a catheter through and that will then be what the embryo will travel through they have an embryo embryologist embryologist i think it's embryologist who is taking, you know, they're throwing out the embryo, they making sure the embryo, they do may do assisted hatching. That's where they kind of help the embryo kind of crack open a little bit. So when it get in there, it's already kind of spilling out, you know what I mean? And then, you know, get up in that lining. Um, and then they um, pass the embry embryologist, give, makes you check off and make sure it's the, you know what I mean, your embryo. And then they give it to the doctor, the doctor get, over the, get it up there and do the catheter and the catheter get it up there and they get it in a perfect location that they feel is the best location to um, implant it, and it's in there. Now, from there, it is on the embryo to do the thing. It's on the embryo to get up in there and nestle up and implant into um, the uterus, and that's where it can be tough and tricky, and that's where whether or not you will become pregnant. So, unfortunately, my first embryo transfer was not successful. The embryo did not implant, and from there, you know, it's it's sad. It's 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 sad. It's it's not like oh okay, it's whatever, you know, because you're you have your high hopes. Like I said, you think an embryo equals a baby. You think an embryo equals a pregnancy, and then a baby, and you go on your merry way. But that's not always the case. Um, and there could be other reasons. So many other reasons why an embryo isn't implanting. So basically, um, after the first embryo transfer you know you you know you do a you do a pregnancy test like 10 days later nine or 10 days late after the embryo transfer and once you're not pregnant they tell you okay expect a period after you get your period you could contact us and we could go into another transfer now like i said for me and myself like and my husband it's like it's not just like oh, okay it didn't work let's just go again let's just go again because you have high hopes and those are your embryos that you worked hard for and you paid hard for so it's not just like oh, okay you know i think for the doctors in the doctor's office because they do this so regularly it's kind of like okay well you're gonna get a period and and it's just like no no slow it on down ma'am i'm gonna need you to slow it on down you know but you follow their lead in a sense and i said this before i felt like i did blindly follow some things because i didn't really know much and so i hope that my hope in doing these videos is to educate and help others to be prepared for what could or couldn't or or what they should have their eyes and ears open for so that they're not going into anything blindly because that can lead to you maybe making decisions that your doctor says that might not be, you know, the best for your scenario. You know what I mean? Like getting a second opinion or whatever, whatever. So that was the first embryo transfer. And that was in May. Um, And then that was like towards the end of May. And so from there, you got to wait. You got to wait till you get your... um cycle again and then they test you see your hormones and stuff like that again sometimes after you know your doctor may have you come in to take a look at things to see if anything changed as y'all know i have fibroids i have fibroids on the outside of our uterus that were large but we were not dealing with those because they felt like the surgery would be too invasive so then we were dealing with just the fibroids inside and those have been removed through a hysteropathy now from there my doctor had me come back in and she saw that I did have, it did look like I had more fibroids. 
So she was like, we can do another hysteropathy on the inside. Maybe that's why the embryo didn't implant. And I began to get nervous. If I'm taking estrogen in these treatments, only to and getting fibroids taken out only to take the estrogen and maybe other fibroids coming back like, this is going to be a vicious cycle you know i began to get very worried about that and you know my doctor was like no not necessarily you know in the amount of time and the dosages that you're on shouldn't be enough to really be you know feeding your body in that way but it's like you still can't help but feel that way you know what i mean we did decide to move forward with the hysterography in which this is my second one you know, they said it was successful and that was that. So from at, right after the hysteropathy, we went into a second embryo transfer. So now we're in like July, I believe. I had my notes here. Um, we're like in July, we do the same thing again. You're on the pills for like two weeks. Then you're doing the injections. You're getting, making sure your lining is right. You're doing your injections for five days. You go in for your embryo transfer, all of that. And then you wait another 10 days, you go do your pregnancy test, not pregnant. So at that point, I'm kind of really like, okay, what's going on? And um, I will talk more about this when I do my video about my larger fibroids, but based on what you see on the screen, based on my experience in the room during the transfer, I was beginning to get very nervous about like, okay, are my outside fibroids affecting the inside? Having a baby while having fibroids can be tough as well. So the fibroids begin in the back of very back, back, back of my mind. Like it just was an ongoing thought. So at this point, we're kind of like frustrated, upset, obviously sad, obviously emotional, obviously feeling like, okay, what the heck is going on? Like what even do we do from here? Um, and that's when my doctor, well, she did mention this before. I'm going to be honest about she, but it was like in passing. It was like, oh, hey girls, this thing called ERA. Anyway, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it wasn't like pushed the way it was pushed after the second failed embryo transfer but basically an era is like a test cycle where they have you do everything the pills and the injections and everything exactly like you would do to do an embryo transfer but instead of an embryo transfer they do biopsy and they remove some of the lining now that's that's painful it hurt like imagine somebody going up in there and just clipping off some of your lining like mm -mm, it hurts um and you're not sleep and you're wide awake and you're not numbed or anything like that. They tell you take like some type of little Tylenol an hour before, baby, what? For what? What is it doing? It's giving Flintstone vitamins. Like, <laughs> but um, yeah, so she mentioned the ERA and she was like, well, you know, this really will help us see if you, they do the biopsy and they send it out for testing because this will help you see if your body is receptive at that time frame of 120 hours, which is the five days. If 120 hours is your actual time or is there a different time that your body is serving? Because some people need more time, some people need less time, some people or most people based on the statistics that they use, 120 hours is perfect. We were hesitant about the ERA because it's one, I don't believe it was covered um, by insurance. So more money, more money, more money. Um, but we felt like, okay, just like I felt about the genetic testing, it's like, we're already in deep. We're already <laughs> invested in this, you know, it's like buying a house and finding out you need a water heater. Like you're not going to not get a new water heater because you already spent all this money in the house. Cause you could lose the house and more if you don't fix the water heater. You see what I'm saying? So it's just like, you got to kind of in too deep, Makai Fife, you know what I'm saying? You already got to just go with flow. So like the ERA cycle. So that's the same. Like these are like months at a time. Like it, it's not just like, oh, quick. Oh, this, this week, that week. It's like month, this month, that month. You're losing a month. And in the fertility world, you know, time is a big thing. They, they, I'm like my maternal age. I have like an advanced maternal age. And baby, I ain't that old. Science and reproductive medicine, you're old. So you know, the clock is ticking, okay? So you wanna get things done as fast as possible. So we do the ERA cycle and it comes back that my body is receptive at 108 hours. So we're like, oh, woo, okay, it was worth the money. Yes, we found something. Now this is it, this is this is the one, baby. This is the one. We, we know what we need to know. So that was kind of like refreshing because you feel like, okay, 
you know, we know what we need to know now, right? Now, this is still 2020. My first embryo transfer was May. My second one was in July. Then we did the ERA cycle. So that pushed us back even more. And that pushed us back into like November. So now we're like the end of the year. We're debating. We're like, okay, do we want to move forward? We're doing it now. It's about to be the holidays. Da, da, da. But like I said, that clock is ticking in your head. You feel like, okay, no, I want to just go, 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 go. And to be honest, like I honestly do feel, and I talk about this with any of my friends that I talk to that are in the fertility journey. Like I do feel like a lot of these places, oh, okay, yeah, call me when you get your period. Call me when you get your period. Call me when you get your next cycle. Call me when you get your next bleed. Okay, like go, go, go. Girl! Hang on a minute. Like, they will, if, if, if you can afford to, and if they got the time to, which they do, um, they will have you going, 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 going. Before you look up, you are like, wait, what? I did how many treatments? So, it is, it is crazy. You know what I mean? At this point, I had did two frozen embryo transfers, one IUI, and two hysteropathies. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot. And guess what? That was all almost in a year span because we started late 2019. So here we are coming up on late 2020. That is a lot. I think between the one, the one, the second one and the third one, we really did kind of slow down a bit. And I just was like, okay, like, it's a lot. Let me just take my time with it. And we'll get back into it when I'm mentally prepared and ready. Started preparing, I think, in like October, technically, for a transfer that was going to be early November 2020. You know, take your pills, do your injections, yada, yada, order office visits, yada, 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 yada. And then you do your embryo transfer, embryo transfer goes. And that one... Like I said, when I get into my fibroids journey, I will go more detail into this. This video is solely just about like the embryo transfers. So I'm trying not to get distracted, but so many things are happening at the same time. This is not just like a linear journey. Like things are happening. Oh, it's staggered. It's a lot. It's, it's, it's very much zigzag. The, at the actual embryo transfer, some things that transpired there really, once again, triggered the back of my brain. Like, is it is it the fibroids? Is something going on with fibroids? Like, what's going on? Um, even though we had had the ERA and I was happy that we had the ERA and we got the results of the ERA and, oh, something's different. Like, we were very hopeful. Going into the third embryo transfer, like, we were like, yo, this the one. Third time's a charm, blah, blah, blah. blah. Like, this the one. And it was unsuccessful. We did not get pregnant. So at that point, that one really rocked us a little bit. Like, we were just like, hard stop. Hard stop. What is going on? Because everything you're doing, you're doing everything they tell you to do. All right, y'all. I hate to leave you hanging, but I'm going to just stop right here. This video is already super long and I have more to share but as you can see i have it already recorded so i'll be back very soon with part five of my embryo journey please don't forget to like comment and share and just show me some love in the comments because as y'all can see your girl has been through a lot and sharing this has not been easy but i hope that it can reach someone and touch someone so until next time i'll see you in the comments peace